Hey, Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Today, I want to talk about Major Robert Anderson. He strikes me as such a remote figure. He's on the stage of the Civil War for such a short period of time, only three days in April 1861. You know the story. He's in charge of the garrison of Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor when forces in rebellion to the United States government fire on the fort, pounding the walls, the bricks with artillery. 36 hours later, Anderson is forced to surrender the garrison. That's on April 13th. April 14th, he marches out of the fort with the Stars and Stripes, which has been taken down from the flag staff that was uh, above the fort. So that's kind of it for Anderson. He disappears. Yes, he stays in the Army up until 63, advances to uh, Brigadier General and gets a brevet. Uh, but that's kind of it. He retires, and he's an older man at that point. And by older, I mean he's in his late 50s. Uh, so he's done and he is in retirement when the war ends. He's brought out of retirement to make a special appearance on April 14th, 1865, four years to the day that he left the fort. And this is where I get to know him a little bit better, thanks to a news report that appears in a Buffalo newspaper, Buffalo, New York, that is. It's the Buffalo Commercial, the April 18th edition. It's four days after this grand ceremony takes place at Fort Sumter to restore the original flag, the identical flag that Anderson carried out of the fort in 1861, high drama as he returns to Fort Sumter. If you want to think about Anderson, as I do, as being the cameo appearance in the opening act of the Civil War, he is certainly there at that final dramatic act of putting the flag back up, pulling the, the halyard and bringing the flag back up to the fort. And so because of this news report that appears in the Buffalo commercial, we get a sense of, at least I get a sense of what he was like when he was there in front of the crowd and some of the words that he has to say and the environment going around. There's thousands of people who have gathered for this moment. And um, just before I give you some passages from this newspaper, I want to describe the newspaper itself. Each page has columns that are lined with thick black rules. And those thick black rules are mourning for President Abraham Lincoln, who has been assassinated. So on April 14th, 1865, Lincoln is no longer with us. Anderson and others are down at Fort Sumter. So I want to give you a little flavor of what happened that day at Fort Sumter, thanks to the newspaper report. So let me start at the beginning, just to give you a, a little bit uh, of the um, environment. So here we go. During the time of the assemblage of the spectators and participants of the ceremonies of the day, those who had just arrived were busily engaged in examining the immense ruin, grouping through the dark passages peering into the bomb proofs and magazines, looking into the throats of the big guns, collecting pieces of shells as mementos, and viewing the surrounding network of rebel fortifications from the ramparts. The scene from the crumbling and demolished ramparts was particularly pleasing. The naval vessels in their gay and brilliant regalia formed a circle around the fort, inside of which were transport steamers landing their passengers. Turning from the sea, the scene within the fort was gradually assuming a more interesting aspect. A large platform, diamond-shaped, covered with myrtle, evergreens, and flowers, had been erected in the center of the parade ground with an arched canopy overhead, draped with the American flag, and intermingled with beautiful wreaths of evergreens and flowers. 
This platform was for General Anderson, the orators of the day, and other distinguished visitors, and was the combined taste of six Union ladies of Charleston. On the stage, beside the speaker stand, was a golden eagle holding a wreath of flowers and evergreens. So wow, imagine that setup, the big canopy, a diamond-shaped stage in the middle of Fort Sumter, which is just ruined. It's collapsing. The cannon are there, and folks have been mingling around to see all the ruins, exploring the ruins. I know I would be doing the same thing, and I want to bet that you would be doing it too. I'm also interested that they were picking up mementos, pieces of shells from the fort itself. So let me get to the second passage here where we have the arrival of Major Anderson. It also mentions General Quincy Gilmore, who's in charge of the department. So here we go. Quote, it was not until 12 o'clock that General Gilmore arrived, accompanied by Major General Robert Anderson and his daughter. Their appearance on the parapet was the signal for loud and prolonged cheers. They advanced to the platform, and General Anderson, for the first time, glanced around on the work of the destruction, but could see nothing by which to recognize the Fort Sumter he had left four years ago in a mass of a shapeless ruin beside him. He finally glanced up at the immense flagstaff, and his eyes filled with tears of joy that the moment had arrived for him to replace the flag he had lowered at the demand of traitors. Wow. So here's Anderson. He's now on the stage with Major General Quincy Gilmore. He's looking around him and he sees the devastation. When he left in 1861, though the fort had been pounded by 36 hours of Confederate shelling, it was nothing compared to 1863, when Union forces unsuccessfully tried to capture the fort. Any damage that was done in 1861 was taken to the fullest extent of destruction in 1863. So you can imagine that Anderson, whatever was going on in his mind for those four years after he had left Fort Sumter to return, trying to find something familiar, trying to find something that he could say, gosh, you know, I remember that wall. I remember walking past that cannon or whatever uh, frame of reference he had. It just wasn't there. The whole thing was, was just demolished. So uh, he's disoriented. At the same time, he's filled with this intense emotion of being back on this hallowed, hallowed ground. So let's go to the third passage. And I've got one more after this. So here we go. Um, Major Anderson's dispatch to the government dated Steamship Baltic off Sandy Hook, April 18th, 1861, announcing the fall of Sumter was then read by General E.D. Townsend. I'm going to pause for just a second because that's the dispatch that was sent by Anderson basically saying to the government, here's my after action report, I surrendered the fort. So back to the, the news story. Quote, the raising of the old flag by Major General Anderson was next on the program. And when he stepped forward on the platform, the burst of joy was uncontrollable. And the gallant old soldier wept and was for some moments unable to proceed with his remarks, which were as follows. My friends and fellow citizens and brother soldiers, by the considerate appointment of the Honorable Secretary of War, I am here to fulfill the cherished wish of my heart through four long, long years of bloody war to restore to its proper place this dear flag which floated here during the peace before the first act of this cruel war. I thank God that I have lived to see this day. Great applause breaking out. And to be here to perform this duty to my country. My heart is filled with gratitude to that God who has signally blessed us and who has given us blessings beyond measure. 
may all the world proclaim glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. And in the crowd, there's voices yelling, amen, amen. So wow, what, what a powerful moment. He's, he's, he's wept publicly in front of thousands of visitors. They're getting ready to raise the flag and he's had his moment. He brings himself together. He gets a hold of his emotions and he speaks briefly. Like, you know, he's a quiet man. He's not a, he's not a really an outgoing guy. And he musters up the courage to say a few words. And he speaks to the crowd. He speaks to his fellow soldiers. He praises God for delivering the country through this awful four years of war. Now, I want to get to the last quote, the last passage of this rather lengthy news article. So here we go. After the crowd is yelling, not yelling, they're saying, amen, amen. Now we're getting back to the story. General Anderson could with difficulty restrain his emotions. And while some shouted themselves hoarse, Others embraced and wept like children. Now, I'm going to pause. He starts pulling the lanyard, and he's getting help from Sergeant Peter Hart, who was one of his men in the garrison of Sumter in 1861. There was a moment during the bombardment, that 36-hour bombardment, when one of the Confederate artillery shots hit the flagstaff and knocked the Stars and Stripes down. Sergeant Peter Hart, who was a peacetime police officer in New York City, volunteers to climb up the pole and nail the flag back to the pole, comes back down. And so isn't it appropriate that the man, Sergeant Hart, who was there in 1861 and reattached the flag during the middle of them bombardment is back to assist Major Anderson, now General Anderson, in getting the flag back up to the top of it. So I'll continue. When the flag reached its height with a wreath of roses appended, the vast multitude continued for some moments to gaze at its fluttering folds. The cheers had not subsided when the salute of 100 guns from Sumter and the national salute from the fleet and Fort Moultrie and Battery B on Sullivan's Island, Fort Putnam on Morris Island and Fort Johnson on James Island placed conspicuous in the inauguration of the rebellion and eminently appropriate for them to take a part not less prominent in this national rejoicing over the restoration of the national authority. National airs were also played by the band, which was followed by the song of the Star Spangled Banner, the whole audience joining and producing an effect truly thrilling. Wow, wow. Talk about moments of the war. Talk about really sort of a, an unremembered moment so the next time you're reading about Civil War history and you get to the part about April 1861 and Major Robert Anderson, it's fitting that you should remember his role in that and the role of all the men in the garrison. But also give a thought to April 14th, 1865, when the Stars and Stripes were restored above Fort Sumter and Anderson was there filled with emotion at having a moment that he waited four years for. So but there you have it. We'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail.